Jessica Henry here, really happy to be back and I'm excited to work on this painting again with you this week. Um, we had a great time last week and um, really just anxious to get this going. It's been difficult to, <laughs> um, to just sit and look at it all week. So anyway, but it, give, it gives me time to just kind of pace myself and it's always a really good practice to, to just take your painting, set it aside, not look at it, not work on it for a while, and then come back to it when um, you've had some time to think about what your next steps are. So anyway, that is what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to work on just, uh, I want to start laying, blocking in some of the, the massing in of the main colors and patterns and things that I see on here. And um, I'd like to work a little bit on my face. Next week, it will not be a live video. Next week, it will be, um, I will upload a video. And I'm doing it that way so that I can include close-up pictures of the actual photograph and then um, be able to zoom in. Since I figured, um, since I'm just going to be working on blocking in a lot of the big um, colors and patterns today, it would be okay to go live because you don't need to have the camera right up close. So, but next week's going to be different. It'll be um, closer, a little bit more personal, deeply involved in that. So that'll be good. And I'm kind of excited about that too, because I'm anxious to get into some of this detail and stuff. All right. So anyway, um, that's about it. And I have my regular palette. Regular colors today, I have titanium white, cad yellow medium. I do have a little bit of cad red light on there. I'm not sure if I'll use it today. I don't know, I just have it on. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, um, and some alizarin crimson. All right, so we are all set. Got my brushes, I've got my Gamsol here. Behind here I have a roll of paper towels that I do um, keep just handy. And then uh, just some linseed oil. And that's it. So I'm going to pull my chair up and pull you guys closer and we will jump in. All right. So good to see you guys. Happy to have you here and with. This can be a fun one today. We're going to see some color put on this thing. So I'm really anxious about that. Okay. So let me get my chair up close and uh, <laughs> we're going to jump in. So I hope that you guys have all had a great week. I really appreciate the support and encouragement that, um, you guys have given about this project. I think it's going to be really fun. So here we go. Setting my palette here. I, I'm sure you probably can't see this very well. Maybe if I turn it a little bit. Yeah, there's still a glare, but anyway, regardless. So let's get going. I'm going to start when you, when you come and you approach your painting the next day or the next week or whatever, after you haven't been working on it, it's good to just sort of start out with something kind of basic and quiet and you know, not really requiring a whole lot of your mental energies. Um, so I am going to start out with just the background, some of the sky, and uh, just to get some of that laid in. So grabbing my brush, grabbing a bigger brush, this is a um, size 8 flat, and I'm getting a little bit wet. So let's jump in. I'm going to get the sky first. So grabbing some white and um, I'll try to hold my palette up here so you can see what I'm mixing while I'm mixing it. I want sort of a warm tone sky but um, kind of cold and snowy. The only thing I'm going to use my Gamsol for is just um, to clean my brush. So now I am actually using linseed oil. I'm going to be using more linseed oil. All right so jumping in looking at my um, reference over here. I took a little bit of ultramarine blue, the tiniest bit of yellow ochre, and then white. A little bit of linseed oil again. And I actually was thinking this morning that it would be good to, I wanted to pose this question to you guys and get your opinion, what you think. So my thoughts here are, as I move forward on this, and like I said, some of these um, passages on this painting are gonna be kind of tedious. So my, my wondering is, as I upload edited videos, do you guys, um, do you want me to work on it separately and then just come back later and show you, well, I went this far, and or do you want me to record every brushstroke? And I mean, I can do that too. So I just thought if you want to leave a comment in the space below and, you know, let me know what your thoughts are on that, um, I'm fine with that. So 
All right, so that's just a really suggested quick sky. I know you can't see all of it, but it's just very subdued, a um, little bit. I want it to be more or less in the background. I have some linseed oil dripping over there. All right, so moving down now to the trees, and I'm going right into the pile that I already had on my palette. A little more ultramarine blue, a little more yellow ochre. Let's make this a, a real misty gray, gray green, almost saged, and then some of that white. So just taking my brush, that needs to be a little darker. A lot of times it's guesswork. <laughs> you lay the brush stroke down, how does that look? Does it need more? Um, and so you make adjustments as you go along. So that could be a little bit more vibrant, a little more um, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue. Let's grab some more cad yellow into there. So just laying down. I don't want this to be very distracting, just very quiet back there. Again, uh, we're just blocking this in. This isn't to complete this passage either. I'll, I'll come back through here and probably push some of the values more and um, just play with that a little bit as we go along. And again, the, the purpose is to not, I do, do not want it to be distracting. So I'm grabbing a little bit of ultramarine blue and sienna. And just, I didn't clean my brush, so I have some of that white already on it. Grabbing some yellow ochre. I want to make the shadow underneath these um, trees back here. I'm just kind of squiggling my brush to suggest the form of that land. Okay, so that's fine. All right, and then um, let's grab a little yellow oak, or excuse me, that's cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. <clears throat> and I just want to throw in a bit. I think that yellow is too bright. I want it to be calmer. A little bit of the earth back there under the trees as it comes down. Now while I have this color on my brush, I can kind of look around to see other places where I see it. I'll just sort of suggest that in there. Grabbing into some of the colors for the bushes and trees in the middle here. And I'll, of course, like I said, I'll come back through with more detail in this passage in here. But not too much more. I don't want it to be um, really distracting. Yellow, cat yellow. Let's get aggressive with that. I want a touch of phthalo green, just a touch. And that will give me this um, really vibrant passage of grass in here. Let's tone it down a little tiny bit. A little more phthalo green into that. I got something on there. All right, so on also, if I miss your comments, I will get at those. But I, if I, I notice I'm able to see your comments, but I don't see a way that I can um, respond to them once the video is done uploading. So what I'll do is if you have a question or something, um, I will simply uh, restate your name from your question in the comment section after it's all done, after the video is done, so that you'll know that I've answered it. So I'm just painting the kind of the shadow mass of this trees here so that it gives that separation between the grass and those bushes back there. And that is just a little bit of the burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, some yellow ochre, and turning my brush to get some of that color back out onto the palette. And I like to keep this sort of staccato brush stroke like this. It gives it that feeling of foliage or we don't really know, but um, you know, we don't need to have all the answers. Sometimes it's just you feel that they're bushes more than it's spelled out for you. Okay, well that's fine. I'll come back through there later. All right, keeping it simple. I want to get this mass up here in of the tree, and that is very dark. So um, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and then we'll grab some yellow ochre. And that'll be a nice anchor. And again, this is not my darkest dark in this painting. So 
I want to reserve that for wherever the eye is going to be focused on. So the eye is always drawn to the area of the greatest contrast. If I make this up here as dark as I see it in there, we're going to go up there, and I don't want that to happen. So I am making that conscious decision to make this a little lighter than what I see, and I'm also painting it a little cooler. It's not, um, it's not really a warm tone green. I want it cooler because it is in the background, and I want it to just feel more suggested rather than, um, again, spelled out in perfect detail. But I think that the, the value mass of it being a darker tone is important because it helps offset some of the other things that are going on in there. Okay. Let's push this a little more. And then we've got the stone wall in here. All right, so I think I'm going to get some of the stone wall in while I'm thinking about it. Uh, burnt Sienna Ultramarine Blue. You can pretty much do almost a whole painting with just those colors. <clears throat> so, just gonna mask this in, keeping it a little bit more loose and suggested. I do like the compositional darkness of it, so keeping this value mass as a complete idea, I can work within that value spectrum to get slight variations without drawing the eye over there by making it too light, too dark. Sometimes people can get to where you observe things just way too much. <laughs> I mean, you have to look at the whole thing and while you're looking at what's in the center of interest, out of the corner of your eye look at things and how much do you see those details. It's not as much as you think, so you have to paint them according to what you see out of the corner of your eye when you're viewing the center of interest. Because that's, that's your gauge. And that's how you'll determine how, how intense to make things. All right, so I don't really want to get too much into this because I'm not done there yet. All right, so mixing up a lighter gray, that ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and I'll grab a little bit of white. And I want some yellow ochre. I'm going to do just that stone wall back here real quick. Just little vertical marks as such. Oh, I wanted to tell you while I'm, while I'm working on this. If you are interested in... Um, you're running out of time. <laughs> if you're interested in our special offer on the from mesas to mountaintops plein air video um, I mean you can get it anytime but you get the special discounted price from now till October 14th and that is seven plein air videos and then a whole like hundreds of dollars worth of free videos and things that we're throwing in so uh, it's only uh, 127 dollars for all seven videos which is a super <laughs> That comes to like, I think what we figure seventeen dollars, and with our videos, we actually we throw in. Um, I, d I write a workbook too for each video, so seven videos, seven workbooks. So I took a little bit of the white and yellow ochre just right on my brush with some of that sienna and blue, and I want to sort of map out some of these passages of these background areas, and I don't want that edge really sharp because that'll draw the eye right back there. Again, trying really hard to keep to the value spectrum that I have here um, laid down as my foundation. So letting this go up. Checking all my parallel lines. Oh, see, that's a bad composition. I don't want the edge of that pillar right in line with my face. So I am going to, uh, I'll make it, maybe I'll bring it back. I think it should be back further from my face. Even though over there in real life it goes beyond, I don't want it to look like a hat. That would look weird. So you can make those decisions. However you think things should look best. That's better compositionally, I think. Then we've got this more interesting t -t 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 like that. <laughs> And that's fine for now. I don't need to get into too much detail and information up there right now. 
Again, I'm just trying to play with some of the massing in here. So a little bit more of the yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. Let's grab some white. I'm looking at this passage behind my head. And I want to get these shapes a little bit better. I'm just redrawing them by looking at where things are. All right, let's let that fade off. So yeah, I, I asked earlier, I'm looking at all these little brick and mortar things back in here. And um, you know, those are interesting and I could work on getting those, but my goodness, I think you guys would all fall asleep <laughs> if I did that on camera. So my question is, is, should, you can leave a comment if, uh, you know, should some of this I work on on my own and then upload um, just what I think would be interesting or would you like me to uh, record every brush stroke, which is fine too. I'm happy to do that. And in fact, I thought what I could do instead of, you know, ad nauseum every brush stroke, I could do it in slightly fast forwarded. I don't like the whole time lapse where you get like three hours and 15 seconds, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer that. Um, but in my editing process, I'm able to just fast forward it a little bit. So if you guys are fine with that, I thought maybe that would be a, an option working on some of these details in here. So let me know what you think. So I'm going to add a little bit more sienna to this mixture to just give it some separation from this brick here to the gravel down here. A little more sienna, a little more blue. I still want the value pitch to be about where that is. Maybe a little lighter because there is more light hitting that gravel than what I have. Also, I wanted to point out, these palettes that you see me use, we are marketing these, and um, I'll show you one that I have here down below that we just finished. It's so beautiful, and um, they're lightweight. And I see a lot of other palette companies out there on the market, but I wanted to point out that um, the reason that I do feel that this is a superior product is because, um, first of all, the, the size makes it easy to carry and it's lightweight um, so you don't get it too heavily loaded and then it weighs a ton and also the color a, a lot of people um, make palettes that are pretty colors or dark walnut or whatever this color is chosen because if you were to take a picture of it in black and white it would be a middle tone range and that is ideal for um, getting accurate color and value mixing so sometimes, you know, just because a wood is an attractive color wood does not necessarily mean that it is a worth, that it is a worth um, painting on because it can really mess up your value patterns or value arrangements as you're working colors and so forth. Um, so going with the middle tone value is a really smart idea for your mixing. So um, also these are balanced on the back and that makes it so that it it just sits really nicely on your hand when you're working for long times in the studio or out in plein air. I've used these in plein air as well. And it's a good, it's a good situation. You know, working on the grass here, phthalo green, cad yellow, um, a little vibrant, a little too vibrant. So let's tone it down a little with some ultramarine blue, some of that cad yellow. Just right in there. That kind of takes it down a little level so it's not screaming at us. And really, you can make something look more um, horizontal by just watching your brush strokes and making sure that they suggest this horizontal feel of grass. So grabbing some different shades and then going in here because I see the grass over there has, it's almost like velvet. There's passages where it's brighter and more intense and passages where it's darker. Just a little bit. 
And just so you know, too, if you're if you're either just joining or whatever, um, again, I am just um, laying down the massing of the colors and so forth. This is by no means how it's going to end up looking for the finished product. And uh, so, just wanting to get a f the flavor of where this is all going to to go in the end. <laughs> in the end or middle stages, whatever. This is a little bit darker green that I just mixed up. Ultramarine blue. I just wanna put a little edge to this grass over here. Okay. All right, so while I have this green, let's get some of that scarf in place. Um, darker green as it's um, in the in the different areas where the form is. Still using the same size eight brush. This is the darker color in here. Let's get more ultramarine blue in there. That. And then back under here where this comes back. You want to really try to look for the big, broad shapes first, and then you can work your way down. But, um, but if many times people like to start out with the detail because that's what's really exciting, but it, it, it can distract from the overall strength of the entire picture. So you really want to um, watch that and just really try to get the big essentials first, then you can get into all the other stuff. But in the meantime, um, you can see how I'm really, I'm not getting into the pattern of knit on the scarf or anything else, or the little tiny subtle changes that I see. I'm just getting the big shapes. Just, I squint down at the picture, and if I was painting this in real life, I would do the exact same thing. I would just squint way down and um, grab the big, big mass shapes. So this is the little bit of the lighter value green on the scarf. And I love how it just kind of blends right into the grass. To me that was something I wanted to make sure I portrayed. Just keeping that really simple and clean. After I get this scarf done, or at least blocked in, I'm gonna get into the head. So, won't keep you waiting too much longer on that. <laughs> and talk about mixing skin tone and um, all this green. We need to counter with some of the red in my hair, which I think will be a nice balance for that. So I wanna use my brush strokes here to help define the form of this scarf too. And let it feel like it's laying on my shoulder that way, kind of watching the angle of that as it comes around. And letting, and I'll lift my brush up a little as it comes down into the shadow. I'm letting some of that light blend into the shadow just by pressing a little bit softer. So I'm gonna grab some of this dark and work the opposite way. So taking the dark, get that thing out there the dark and press lighter as it goes into the light. Okay, do you see how that kind of created that subtle feeling of the, the light coming down and the shadow coming up? I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Take some of that dark and bring it up here into the light. All right, and then getting some of the, this is like a highlight. It's even brighter than Everything else, let's get this in here, which is a nice lead in, too. Wipe some of my brush off. Just keeping that really soft. And let's go like that. Okay, so that's fine for the scarf for now. Okay, 
So let's get, yeah. Switching brushes. And I think I'm gonna clean my palette off too. I'm going to keep my one paper towel here. Now that I work on my face, I kind of mentally shift gears too. So cleaning all these greens off my palette. I don't want them to taint too much of the skin. I don't mind a little bit of green in some of the shadows on the skin, but, you know, I don't want to look sick either. <laughs> so, all right, so the palette's wiped off. And I put my paper towel kind of right here. I'm going to reach back here and grab some more. Here we go. All right. So let's get in there and get some of this. Um, let's start with the hair. I don't want this paper towel. Let's do this one. So um, let's get and grab. Let's do the shadows first. Burnt Sienna. Ultramarine blue. I start with the darker passage back here behind my head. So last week I worked on measuring and making sure that everything was in its right place. And um, that, that was a really, I hope that that was an informative one. I think that I can, you know, pretty much trust that the key players are all in the right location as I move forward with um, just actually just painting. As I paint, I do always double check my measurements, kind of just with my eye, checking where the edge of the ear goes straight down to the neck and that sternocleidomastoid muscle coming from behind the ear down this way. All those things I want to just, I, I kind of visually just double check as I'm going along. All right, so then um, I'm just squinting at my head over there and seeing where all the darkest darks are. I don't really care about the clip or anything. I'm just going to get the strong shape of this shadow in here. And again, this is just burnt sienna and ultramarine blue in almost equal proportions. The more blue you add, the darker it becomes. And so since I want some of that red to show through, I'm letting maybe just a little bit more of the sienna sh show through sometimes. Again, checking the angle of the different things passages in here. And then as the hair moves towards the light, I'll be using less blue and I'll mix in a little bit more yellow ochre into that. And a little bit more. Let's grab that. And I just paint my colors together. And I'm also trying to be cognizant of the shape of the skull under the hair. And, you know, the, um, we have this, this temporal bone as it comes up from the, the temple, and it curves up this way. And if my hair wasn't poofy, you'd see that there was a highlight running along this way because the temporal bone comes right at the turning of the temple. You've seen skulls, you know, where they're flat on the sides. That, that generates a highlight in the hair. So I'm going to reflect that with a little bit more yellow ochre. Let's grab some cad red, a little bit of cad red. I'm not sure if, if any, anybody is actually following along on this, but I did say that you are welcome to go to my Facebook page and grab this picture if you're interested in it in, in following along. But if you are, go ahead and comment below if, if you are enjoying this and it's something you are following along. I would love to hear what you think about the process so far and if you're enjoying it. Um, and yeah, that, that would be interesting, I think. So I'm grabbing a little bit more uh, of the cad red into this yellow ochre mixture to get some of these more uh, reddish intensity as we move towards the top of the head. And my hair kind of does this little flip. Let's do a cad yellow and some white as we reach towards the top. A little more cad red. 
I got too much dark on my brush. So right at the top, it's a little bit more intense. And then there's some dark stuff in here and some... It was very, very windy in this passage in here, this, this day at this... I mean, when we were there, it didn't, we weren't there all day, but... So one of the tricks to painting hair is really to just um, think about it as being a mass of something on the skull and really get your mind in that mode where it's just, um, I th think of it as a mass instead of the individual hairs. Okay, cleaning my brush off, squinting down at my face, I want to get the shadows in first. So I just, I can just use what I have here on my palette, a little sienna and blue. Let's grab some of that white. I want a cooler shadow um, because it appears Actually, what I have going on here is cooler shadows, warm middle tones, and then cool highlights. So let's get these. I always just make a mark and see where I'm at. That's kind of a, a gray middle tone color. So let's make a little darker. Sienna, blue, let's see where we are. We closer? <laughs> this up a little. It's very, you have to be very careful not to use too much blue in your shadows um, because you can make it look like a five o'clock shadow and that may not be desirable on everyone. <laughs> I know I would prefer not having a five o'clock shadow. So a little bit of linseed oil kind of thins, thins it down a little bit. And while I have this color on my brush, I see it back here behind the ear. It's okay to jump around like that every once in a while. If you have a good color and you see it in other places. This hair color kind of framed the whole ear back in here. And then this shadow under the chin connected behind the ear a little so. What I see I need to do is grab some of this white and make a quick gray over here because this stone behind my chin helps define it and it's back there in the background. So we're gonna use that to help pull that forward or explain it or whatever. So grabbing a little sienna, a little ochre in my cheek bone in place. And I see that that is forming the eye socket too. Now again, I want to be careful to not get too much detail going on in here because I want to show you that in a different video up close. Um, because I think it'd be a lot more informative for you to be able to see with the camera a lot closer. But regardless, I still want to get sort of an initial layer put down of color. Yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, and some white right into that. I'm going to come in here and just start laying in. As the light moves down a face, it gets less and less, and that's called the movement of light. And um, I love that effect, how it gets... Um, a little bit more muted and, and just has that beautiful feeling and um, so I'm gonna work on that. I'm probably gonna not be able to talk as much in this passage because I'm really trying to concentrate. <laughs> so again um, this color, the colors that I'm using are just sort of a mixture. I'm gonna hold my palette down a little bit more. You may not be able to see but I'm just taking bits and pieces of Let's grab some alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, 
And I'll just sort of mix up a puddle off to this side, and I may jump into that as a sort of a cooler tone. And then I'll mix up one over here of yellow ochre. Let's grab some cad red. And that's a little bit warmer skin tone. This is just for my Irish complexion. Um, okay, so let's try this. I'm gonna grab some of this warmer tone in here. And I see it up in here too. Maybe a little bit more cad red. Where you have more blood flow on your face, obviously you're gonna have more reddish tone under the skin. And where there's bone closer to the skin, you have less oh, blood flow there. So I'm letting this light go cooler down here towards the bottom. on the neck. I don't want to go too vertical on the neck because it just makes it feel more stove pipey, like a stove pipe. So um, always watch that mastoid muscle behind the ear as it curves and comes down to the front of the clavicle. Adjusting the ear for now to get it in place. I want to get just a brighter highlight on the tip of the ear. And while I have that bright color, I'll just hit the highlights where I see them. Bring it down a little. This brush is kind of making me crazy. I just feel I can't get a nice chiseled edge. Oops. Again. Thinking topography, letting the brush stroke um, define the form. I'm going to use the smaller one. There we go. Size two. <laughs> grabbing a little bit of the cad red and just mixing it right into that. I'm gonna really hit some of these more intense color notes as I see them. I have to actually fix it a little, more, a little bit more square my canvas. Sorry if my head's in the way. Grabbing different brushes. Grab this one. I need to have a little bit of the background green in place because I need to kind of reshape. So I'll just get a little mixture going here of that so I can rework the shape of the nose. Switching brushes under my palette. Just 
going to mix a little bit darker gray on my palette so that I can get gray-brown some of these in my eye. I know. Hey, we can always make that bigger. <laughs> okay, so just kind of cleaning that up in there a little bit. I'll get more of that later. Right now, I just want to make sure that structurally we're all in place. There goes that one. bottom lip. And I'm going to kind of soften some of this real quick. You can just kind of lay your brush on the side just to do a little bit of delicate scumbling or whatever. Taking some background color, just putting this into place to help reshape some passages in here. to pull out some more highlights and kind of work on the structure now. Things can tend to get uh, mushy or lost or whatever as you're going forth and working around things and uh, it's good to just stop every once in a while and go back and double check where are we going? What's, where are we at? So I'm putting in um, like the hairline got too far back so I'm going to bring that back further this way. A little bit darker. <coughs> Just some darker colors in here. <laughs> All right, where does the nose start? Right. The eye comes down like that. The nose comes out like that. And then the cheek, oops. Grabbing a little bit of light, cad, yellow, maybe some alizarin. Just mixing up this kind of a light passage in here. It seems I've lost my eye. <laughs>
lower eyelid. bit of eyebrow back in place. Just suggest that. All right, and then bringing that shape and softening this a little bit on the forehead. There's passages where there's more bone and then where there's it kind of turns and it's fleshier. So you just want to, um, where it's fleshier, go a little bit softer edge. So I'm going to come up in here and where the hair is kind of doing this messy thing, I am taking some sienna and ochre and I just want to do some flicking like this. And I can take some of that skin tone and bring it up into the hairline, like that. And I'm looking at the distance here where the hairline is in relation to the, the facial features. So I'm bringing that up and in the right place. And then the hair comes down in front of the ear. So you can see I just really wanted to get that structure there a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to take a little more sienna and alizarin. I'm sorry, I meant sienna and um, cad red with a little bit of this white mixture to get some of these, um, what is that, a little bit, a little bit darker where the cheek has that passage. You always check things, and if you need to push a little further, then you push it. But you can never know if you need to push it further unless you go a little bit too far. You can always scale it back. And, um, but if you don't go far enough, then you never know. So let's, uh, grabbing a little bit of cad red. Let's just see what we can do with this. Taking the colors that are already on my brush colors that are already in on the face. I like that effect where that cad red is just mixing with those skin tones. Let's bring that down very gently down the cheek and then also on the nose. I'm going to try to make my brush have a nice flat chiseled edge. I lay my pinky down and I'm going to go straight that way. And then following the form of my cheekbone, just a little bit like that. Okay, so now I feel that there's not enough of a cascading light movement down, um, <laughs> down my cheeks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I will. I will be definitely. I'm not going to get in there super fussy with the detail on this because I do like that uh, looser effect. So just, I wiped my brush off here, and I let some of that, and I just gently scumbled where some of that cad red met the highlight in there. Because I think that that, I like that rosy glow. It feels very Irish. <laughs> um, a little bit of alizarin and sienna. I need to put a little bit of suggestion of that there are actual lips over there. <laughs> just a bit. sharp that is. Oh, a little bit more highlight. Hmm. Okay. 
And I'm thinking about where the cheek meets the the front part of the. <laughs> thank you. Uh, where the the whatever the mouth part meets the cheek part. And I want to. Close enough. Um, there's different passages where the light is a little bit stronger, where it's a little bit less, where it's a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer. I'm not going to get really carried away with all of that information in there. That's better. So the passage under lower lip before you get to the chin just has that really subtle change and hit up the highlight on the chin a little bit more and I, I mean I know you can't really see my palette because it's sitting on my lab <laughs> But um, I'm really just using the same exact mixtures on my palette that I've been using so far. Nothing is altered. I'm just grabbing into the different piles. It's not in the right place. Let's grab some of this background back here. And you can just use the background to carve and shape things as needed. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. <laughs> the neck is cutting into the neck, sh the, the chin shadow. So I want to sort of reveal where that is going and some of the anatomy there. Where the jaw meets the ear over here, there's a little bit more of a division there. And I'm looking at this overall angle where the, the temple of the hair comes down and the ear is in the way right here. So just looking at all those lines. Grabbing a little bit more, a few highlights in here as I see them on the ear and come around in the temple. And that's not really the temple. What is that where the ear connects to the head? I don't know. Anyway. The ear lobe is going to be about right there. I'll play with some of the internal structures of the ear later. But the whole painting is not about the ear, so I don't want to really spend a ton of time and energy on that, but it has to be um, just suggested and in place. All right, so <laughs> how are we doing on time? Okay, I'm gonna have to wrap it up here pretty soon. And like I said, next week, um, we'll get into more of the, I'll zoom in more. It won't be live next week. It'll be um, a pre-recorded video so that I can get into some of the more, um, yeah, more detail-y stuff. But I do want to, maybe I will be live because if I, I thought I'd get a little farther this week, but I've been kind of preoccupied with doing this stuff. So maybe, maybe we will go live and finish blocking in because I want to try to keep these about an hour long and not really go much longer than that. I'm mixing up, sorry, you can't see, a little bit of the green for the scarf because it needs to come up a little bit higher here. 
and it comes up around the face. Okay, well, I think that that's a pretty good stopping place for today. It was good to get some color on and kind of see where it's going to go. Maybe I'll just real quick before I sign off, put a few more highlights in the hair and on the head, paying careful attention to where the temporal bone would be. Yellow ochre. Let's go like this. No, we can't. If you can see that, you really can't. Um, right on the top. I also want to be cognizant of the shape of my head, too. It's flatter on top. And got this stuff happening. Just let some of the things your brush decides to do, just do it. And then, oops. I see some silhouettes of hair doing stuff down here. That's fine. Okay. And I do believe that that's a good stopping place for today. And uh, I promise <laughs> I won't fiddle around with it. And um, we will, I will see what you guys say in the comments if you'd like me to. Um, record every brush stroke on this or if you would like me to um, I can just work on some of it on my own and then um, just kind of pick up where we left off and whatever so I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit closer what was done today so we worked on all of that and um, of course uh, in the week that before uh, we do this again, I will have um, spent time and I'll figure out, you know, problems and <laughs> see how I can work things around. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me and um, I hope that this has been helpful and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and like if you like what you're seeing. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. And go ahead and share these with your friends. Um, it's always fun to meet new people and I enjoy that I can recognize some of your names now and um, I've been on here for a year and really appreciate you guys' support. So thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend. Bye.